today we're going to look at using the sum ifs formula in Google Sheets to get totals or subtotals for your data. So let's look at it first using text. So here we have a simple formula using sum ifs. And the first thing we want to look at is the sum range. So this is the numbers that we want to add up. So for example, here, the amounts. Next is the range that we want to compare against our criteria. For in this instance, we have basic. And so what this will do was it'll add up everything in column B, where column A is equal to basic. Simple enough. Let's go ahead and look at if we have a drop down here, how we can tie it to this drop down instead of simply typing it in here. So this is as simple as selecting that cell. Now, if we parse through this, we can see that it automatically updates based on our selection. Now, what if you want more than one criteria? Well, some ifs, unlike some if, allows you to do multiple criteria. And so all we have to do is add any additional columns we want to check and select the additional criteria. So now we can select a status as well as a subscription plan and get our total there. So let's go ahead and jump over to numbers. So with numbers, we can check a amount and only return the ones that are over 150. So there's a couple different ways we can compare. So there's this is a greater than. We have greater than and equals to, and you can see the amount changes there in our little highlight. We can do equals to, we can do less than, and we can do less than and equals to. So there's multiple comparatives that you can do. And so let's just do greater than equals to for now, just like that. Now, if we want to use the amount from a cell where we can easily adjust it, let's go ahead and change that. So we're going to keep our comparative right here. And then we'll use ampersand and add our cell. So you can see there, we're getting the same as we were before with 150 inside the string. And again, if we want to add the less than, we can simply copy this, change it to less than, and then update our cell reference to the less than we want to grab. So now, as we change this, we can see that changes, or if we change that, it also changes. So that's an easy way to reference numbers. Now let's go to dates. So with dates, it, the logic is exactly the same. So for example, here, we're going to now look in our column D where we have dates. And you can put in a date here, and this is going to exactly match that specific date. Now, if you want to do the comparisons again, we can do greater than, less than, less than equals to, etc. Now, what happens if you don't want to type the data in, you want to reference the cell? We will do the same thing as we did with the numbers. We'll put the comparative operator inside our quotes, use our ampersand, and put in our number. So this one, we're probably looking at an equals, just like that. Now, if we want to do our before then and greater than, go ahead and throw in some dates here and look at how we can put this together. So let's say greater than equals to G4. And then we can copy this and do less than or equals to G5. And there we go. So if we change these dates, we will see that data changes. Just like that. And that is how you use dates. So let's look at another criteria where we're looking at if a cell is blank or not. And so here, if we're looking for the ones that have not been activated yet, do not have an activation date, we're going to add up everything in B where D is equal to blank. And so we have nothing inside that string. Now, if we want to look at what's not empty, we use this double angle, and this signifies does not equal. And so since we don't have anything in here with this, it does not equal blank. Just to show you this, uh, let's go back to text. To just show you in a little more detail how this works. So we can do this and do not equal to basic. 
And so what this does is it adds up everything in B where A does not equal basic. All right, so continue on, let's go ahead and go to or. So what if you want two criteria? You want to see basic or business, or maybe you want to see business or enterprise or whatever the case may be, and you want to be able to see across two metrics. So you could do a sum if for business and a sum if for enterprise and add them together, or you can use an array formula to combine the two. And so what we have here is a sum ifs, and we're going to add up B, and we're going to use this formula called regex match that is going to search for basic or business. So we don't have time to fully explain this, but basically what this is looking for is basic, and this is a or operator inside that formula. And so anything that matches basic or business is going to return as true. And so that's what we have right here. So we can show you this real quick. We pull this out, put this inside a rate formula and a regex match. And you can see here, it returns true, true, false, true, 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 false, true, true. So you can see there's our condition, and that's what's matching inside the regex match. So here, we're actually going to add another level. Instead of simply typing in our conditions here, we'll use our conditions from our dropdowns, and we're going to use another formula here called join to put together our enterprise. It's like we have the wrong cells here. Our business and enterprise together there as well. And so you can see if I highlight this, it shows me it's returning that business and enterprise. All right, finally, we are going to look at some more uses with array formula and how we can populate multiple cells or do other combined functionality. So for example, here, we want to sum up basic business and enterprise. And so we can do this array formula and we can do this. It's called an array literal. And if we put wrap it in a sum, then it will show us the total. So to explain this a little better, let's go ahead and look at what this is doing here. So if we go down here, I'm showing two different versions. So here's an array literal, and we have three different strings. If we separate by commas in the US, it renders them as columns. So just to show you that that's what's working, let's go ahead and put a single quote to just turn it into text instead of formula. You can see these cells now do not populate. So I turn this back into a formula, then those populate. And this one, if we go like this, you can tell this one actually populates the rows and you can see the differences here. Instead of commas, we have semicolons. So the one populates rows, the other one populates columns. So what we're doing here is this is populating columns. And then if we look down here, we're populating rows. And so this one, currently isn't filling across because we have this sum, which is actually adding up the three that we have. So we get rid of that sum. You can see now it's auto filling the basic business and enterprise totals right there. And so we can take this same formula and all we gotta do is change these commas to semicolons. If you look down here, we have that exact formula right here. We change the commas to semicolons. Now it fills going down. Just to show you, I'm gonna add my single quote and you can see that it actually indeed fills down. So you can do this to actually fill subtotals, totals um, for as many values as they need, just like that. Another way you can do it, instead of using this where we're manually typing each value, we want to use this. And this one allows us to autofill based on whatever values we need to in a separate range. And so that what this is doing is going to look at column A, compare it to what's in column F8 through F10, and then give us the total in B. And one thing you will notice is I've changed from sum ifs to sum if, and the reason being is that this won't fill automatically with sum ifs. All right, that is it for today. Hope that was helpful for you, and tune back again soon to see more videos on more formulas and functions.